Good morning, everyone. It's really nice to be here uh, to present you my study. I'm really studying the Crohn's disease and mainly the effect of the serum of this patient on the enteric activity. Inflammatory bowel conditions, as you all know, it's chronic inflammatory conditions that they affect the um, gastrointestinal tract. There are two types, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. I'm focusing on Crohn's disease, which is a worldwide disease that it can affect all the layers of the gastrointestinal tract from the mouth until the anus. Uh, genetic and environmental factor, along with microbiota, uh, in accordance with an inappropriate immune response, are suggested as the factors that they are causing Crohn's disease. But that's not just all. Neurogenic inflammation is also an important player in the whole link between Crohn's disease development. <coughs> uh, back in 1996, uh, studies in the content top tamarine revealed the first link between brain gut axis. So they were giving a uh, neurokinin 1 receptor antagonist and they saw that the inflammation was reduced in this model. This model uh, develops um, spontaneous colitis once it's removed from its environment. Um, parallel study in our lab uh, using capsaicin and record, uh, plasma extravasation showed that um, this was mediated by capsaicin uh, sensory evoked nerves. Also, uh, later on, a case control study in a patient that uh, had uh, ulcerative colitis uh, was show relapse after uh, it got a spinal cord stimulation. So here you can see with blue the blood vessel and then the ganglia with the neurons and there is a close proximity. Knowing the link between neurogenic inflammation and plasma extravasation and vasodilation, we could ask the question, are there bloodborne factors influencing neuronal activation? So the aim of my study was to see whether sera from patients with Crohn's disease affect enteric activity, and to do so, um, we hypothesize that there are <coughs> sorry, mediators present in the serum of this patient that can induce different neuronal responses compared to healthy controls. For my study, I used three different groups, healthy controls, patient in remission, and also a group of active patients. Patients were categorized based on endoscopical finding and also their disease activity index. Uh, we tried to match the age and the gender of the patient. So a bit about our method. We dissect the submucous uh, plexus of a guinea pig colon. Then we do a flat sheet preparation which we mount onto a microscope. And then we can stain with voltage sensitive dyes individual ganglia. And this is uh, the picture that we get when we see it under the microscope. And then we can apply our substance and we can record from these neurons. We can do a pair study so we can apply another stimulus in the same ganglion and then record a different uh, activity pattern. So all of the studies that I'm going to present, they were performed in uh, several hundreds of neurons and they were pairwise. Um, so, a control was matched either with an active or with a remission patient. Here you can see the neuroindex. Neuroindex represents the overall activity within the ganglion. So, from this graph, it's evident that both active and remission show higher uh, activity patterns compared to control sera. Here I'm plotting the difference in the neuroindex, which means from the activity of the, of the active or the remission, I subtracted the control, just to show you that indeed this is a difference in the activity patterns um, and to make a difference from all the uh, sera that they are clustering in the zero values. And then we were wondering, is there a difference between the disease stage? But uh, doing pairwise analysis again, we saw that there is not significant difference between uh, the disease and there is no fluctuation in their response. 
So our next question was, what are the mediators in the serum? What drives the response in the patients? So our first idea was TNF-alpha. They are suggested that these patients, they do have increased TNF-alpha. So just as a proof of principle, I applied uh, TNF-alpha in the neurons and I saw an increased response, which I could block with a dalimumab. So I did the same technique with uh, the patients. So here is the active and then the remission, and they, they were incubated with a dalimumab. And indeed, the response was reduced in these patients, suggesting that TNF-alpha can be in the serum of these patients. We also did a correlation based on TNF-alpha and the neuronal activity uh, between the people. And uh, there is a correlation of TNF-alpha with neuronal activity, suggesting that indeed is an important mediator. So overall, my study shows that serum from Crohn's disease patients evoke stronger neuronal activation compared to the controls. This activation is comparable between active and remission states, and we can reduce this activation with a dalimumab, suggesting the involvement of TNF-alpha. TNF-alpha concentration directly relates with um, neuronal uh, activation. So my uh, study stressed the importance of zero factors in regulating neuronal activity under physiological and pathophysiological conditions, and we suggest that serum-induced nerve activation is involved in symptom generation, both inactive and in a remission Crohn's disease. So I would like to thank the people in my lab, the people in the University of Nantes, and also the Fields People Hospital for the samples, and of course the Neuron Guide for the funding. And thank you all for listening.